Welcome to Mix CG Arts. In this short tutorial, we'll explore how to create explosive effects in Blender using the Explode modifier and specific particle system settings. Get ready to add some excitement to your animations as we dive into the process together. For this process, I've added Suzanne the monkey with a subdivision modifier set to level 2. Feel free to use any mesh of your choice for this tutorial. Next, click on the Particles Properties tab. Click on the plus icon to add a particle system. We need to change the number value to 30 to decide how many pieces of the mesh we want for our explosion effect. Feel free to adjust this number as you like. Frame start refers to when the explosion should begin, and I'm setting mine to start on frame 15. I'm setting the frame end to 16, just one frame after frame 15. Uh, for now, I'm setting the lifetime to 100. Now, let's go to the Velocity tab. The Normals value controls how strong your explosion will be. I'm setting the Normals value to 25, but feel free to adjust it based on your preference. Set the Randomized value to 25, and make sure to check the Rotation option. This allows the mesh to rotate and spread out more easily. Now, let's navigate to the Modifiers tab. Next, let's add the Explode modifier. Now, let's play the animation to see how the explosion effect looks. Let's adjust the modifier and see how it looks. You can see here that the mesh looks smoother after adjusting the modifier. As you can see, the animation stops at frame 100. To extend the duration, let's increase the lifetime value in the particle system. Let's increase the value to 200. Let's play the animation again. As you can see, the particles are visible here. Let's hide them. Navigate to the, ren navigate to the Render tab and change Halo to None. Now, let's switch to the Shading workspace to apply a material to the object. Let's open a new window to view the timeline. Let's click on New to add a material to the object. We're going to animate the emission value to give the object a burnt effect before the explosion. Hover the mouse over the color and strength values, then press I to insert a keyframe. I'm adding the keyframe on frame 15 just before the explosion starts. Also, I'll add a keyframe on frame 13 to create a smooth transition from no glow to glow. Let's change the color to orangish yellow on frame 15 and increase the emission strength to 2. Hover the mouse over the color and press C to copy the color, then paste it to the base color by pressing V. I forgot to add the initial keyframe on frame 1 for the white color. Let's do that now. Press I to insert a keyframe. Okay, let's add a keyframe for this emission value. Press I to insert a keyframe. Let's head over to the Render tab to enable the Ambient Occlusion and Bloom options. Let's switch back to the Layout workspace. Now it's time to add the Fireball. For this purpose, I'm adding a UV sphere. Let's decrease the segments and rings from the pop-up menu. Right-click and select Shade Smooth. Press S to make it a bit smaller than the Suzan object like it's fitting inside. Press I to insert a keyframe. Let's move forward 5 frames and scale it slightly larger. Press I to insert a keyframe. Let's advance another 5 frames and this time scale it down to a very small size. Let's insert a keyframe. Now move it to frame 60 and this time press S then 0 to scale it down completely. Press I to insert a keyframe. Now move it to frame 14, one frame before the first keyframe, then press Shift D to duplicate the last keyframe and move it to frame 14. Now let's see how our animation turned out. Let's switch to the viewport shading mode. Now select the sphere and navigate to the material properties tab, then click on new to add a material to the UV sphere. Give the sphere an orange color, then Hover the mouse over the color and press Ctrl-C to copy it. Now, go to the Emission option, press Ctrl-V to paste the orange color and set the strength to 30. Now it's time to see the animation and see what we've got. 